Magnetoencephalography is a fascinating brain imaging technology which can measure the magnetic fields generated by neuronal activity in the brain. Magneto means magnetism, encephalo means the brain, and graphy means imaging, so magnetoencephalography is imaging of the magnetic fields of the brain. The reason this technique is such a breakthrough in the scientific community is that it allows for a completely non-invasive neuropsychological analysis of the ongoing activity in the brain. Scientists have been able to utilize the distribution of magnetic fields to be able to locate the parts of the brain which are activated when certain stimuli are applied. This discovery has allowed for breakthroughs in understanding the brain as well as its structure and function. The brain works because thousands of neurons send out tiny electrical impulses each second. Thanks to these electrical impulses, very small magnetic fields are produced, which the advanced technology in magnetoencephalography is able to locate. The neurons in the brain produce electrically charged ions, which when excited, produce a flow of ions, which generate an electromagnetic field, which can be felt outside of the head. The reason that the magnetic field is produced by these moving ions has to do with the domains of the excess electrons. Within atoms, the electrons are always in motion, and their movement can be classified as orbital or spin. The spin of an electron can only be in one of two directions, since it rotates around its center. Large groups of electrons which have the same spin will come together and align to form a domain. Domains which are next to each other often tend to have a different orientation, and in neutral atoms, these domains will cancel out and no magnetic field will occur. However, in a moving charged atom, the excess electrons will have domains which aren't cancelled out and will create a net magnetic field. This magnetic field which is produced is extremely small, yet magnetoencephalography is able to pick it up with the use of a device called SQUID, which stands for Superconducting Quantum Interference Device. Squids are sensors which are bathed in a helium cooling unit to approximately negative 269 degrees Celsius. The way that these results are analyzed is by identifying the direction of the magnetic field and then determining the direction of the electric field by using the right hand rule. The scan provides us with the direction of the magnetic field. We can imitate that field by curling the fingers on our right hand in the same direction. Then, by pointing out our thumb, we can determine the direction of the electric current, which, in this case, means where the electrical impulse of the brains are traveling. From this information, scientists can determine how, which parts of the brain interact with each other when stimulated. The squids are able to detect and amplify these results, which are then superimposed onto an MRI image for analysis. The time scale for magnetoencephalography is only a matter of milliseconds, which is negligible in comparison to those of MRIs and PET scans. Its precision is also incredibly accurate, since its proximity to identifying the location of the brain activity is within millimeters. Another unique feature of magnetoencephalography is that it is 100% non-invasive, meaning it does not require exposure to any x-rays or the injection of dyes or isotopes. This means that the process is completely safe to do repeatedly on patients, including children. This is because the magnetic field produced is able to pass through the brain tissue and the skull without causing damage of any kind. Unlike other brain imaging technologies, magnetoencephalography is a completely direct route to analyzing brain activity. Magnetoencephalography also does not require complete stillness. It can even take place when the patient is sleeping. Overall, magnetoencephalography is a safer, more effective, and accurate method of analyzing brain activity. Because the magnetic fields produced by the brain are so small, ranging from 10 to the negative 12 to 10 to the negative 15 telsa, the procedure must take place in a magnetically shielded room to prevent the interference from the magnetism in the environment, such as elevators or traffic. The only other negative aspect of magnetoencephalography is that it does not provide structural or anatomical information about the brain, which is why it is usually combined with MRI scans to get a more complete image. The price of a magnetoencephalography device and magnetically shielded room is around $2 million, which is quite expensive. In comparison, most EEG machines range from a price of $30,000 to $35,000. However, because of the rising interest in this technology, efforts are being made to try to reduce costs associated with the machine to make it more widely accessible.
Magnetoencephalography has very few social and environmental implications, since it is completely safe to use, has no ethical concerns, and does not have any impact on the environment other than the materials required to build the machine and the energy required to use it. Magnetoencephalography was first utilized in 1968 by a physicist named David Cohen from the University of Illinois. He was able to measure and analyze the magnetic fields produced by brain activity with the use of a copper induction coil since squid technology was not yet available. The results were initially poor and difficult to read, so Cohen built a better magnetic shield room and teamed up with a researcher from Ford Motor Company named James E. Zimmerman, and together they produced a crystal clear result. In 1968, the technology was used by individually measuring different parts of the head, but in the 1980s, the technology was advanced so that large areas of the brain can be analyzed at one time. Today, the patient simply has to wear a helmet which has 300 sensors, which can measure waves from all around the brain at the same time. There are many applications of magnetoencephalography, since when it comes to exploring the brain, there are endless possibilities. Other than the broadest application, which is pre-surgery planning, scientists are currently researching a plethora of applications. One of the fields scientists are currently exploring is epilepsy and the parts of the brain which are activated during epileptic seizures. Similar research is being done for Parkinson's disease to determine what causes the tremor which is synonymous with Parkinson's. Even psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia, Alzheimer's disease, obsessive compulsive disorder, alcoholism, and depression are being explored.